we are going to start with our fourth unit which is CNN stands for convolutional neural network so we are going to see the first topic as an introduction to what exactly is CNN um, and let's see dive into what is CNN so as I begin uh, CNN was the real beginning of deep neural networks okay till now what you were doing was like a uh, MLP or multi-layer perceptron network they are actually like shallow neural networks they do not have uh, much complexity they do not have more number of layers they cannot work with large amount of data right so it was not easy for the shallow neural network to extract any high level features from the data suppose if you're working with images and you have to extract a lot of features out of such a big uh, amount of data then it was not easier for the shallow neural network to work for the same and the generalization capability of shallow neural network or uh, multi-layer perceptron was not enough okay uh, so so cnn was exactly the real beginning of deep neural network era is what i can say uh, so what was the problem with our mlps that is our fully connected layers so suppose if you are working with a image data then a fully connected layer which is also known as a dense layer okay it does not take into account the spatial structure of the data so we all know how exactly is the image right uh, so the image is something like it's it's like a grid the image is uh, like a grid if i want to talk on an image then sorry then uh, the image is exactly like a grid like of a structure so like that you have multiple uh, many uh, uh, count of images to work with and exactly what you have here is your data is spatially connected to each other you know if i have to take group of pixels into account to identify what exactly is the information in this particular image so the dense layer or a fully connected layer uh, cannot take into account the spatial structure if I am working with an image data for an example. Okay. So the fully connected layer, what it is going to do, a fully connected layer if I am working with, it is only going to treat each pixel as an independent feature. So if I have an image also, then these group of pixels is what give me the information but then fully connected layer will be taking each pixel as only independent feature so whereby what happens is this spatial interconnection between these pixels and the information that it gives to you is getting discarded okay so when you have got and also if i say if it take individual pixel as single feature then you have got large number of parameters okay because you already know uh, this is how we work with a fully connected layer. You take uh, inputs, multiply it with weight, add up to the biases, apply suitable activation function and then you get the output, correct? So if you treat each pixel as an independent fe feature, then you have got large number of parameters. So computationally, the model is going to be very, very expensive. Also, if I want to say, this particular model is going to be overfitted because you know, fully connected layer or an MLP, multi-layer perceptron, if I talk, number of layers are very small. It is exactly a shallow neural network, okay? So when you are working with humongous amount of data, say images, and every image has got single feature as one pixel, that's how it is treating, then you imagine the amount of the data that you're giving to this smaller network, smaller uh, model with less number of layers. So what happens, your model is definitely overfitted and especially this is possible when you are working with more high resolution images. Okay, so with that these were all the problems for fully connect with fully connected layers and then there was a need to introduce some different type of a model to overcome this, uh, these problems. So, let's see now. So with this what happened, uh, there was a need to understand what exactly is the spatial dimension of your data. So with that came into advent this term that we call it as a local correlation. So what exactly is the correlation? How is one pixel dependent on another? Okay, what is the, uh, you know, uh, what, what, what kind of relation is there between these two individual pixels that is present? So when I talk on local correlation, I want to take it as a separate topic and teach you because you have to understand what exactly it is. 
so in real life you know there is lot of data that we use uh, which is based upon the location or a distance as a measure of importance of distribution and suppose if i um, if i take an example probably a naive example but please understand you know if you are misbehaving at your home then probably your one of the parents may ask you right uh, with whom are you sitting these days correct so you know you have got that peer influence what we say you know with whom you sit surrounding influences so the same thing here uh, there is lot of data that we use location or the distance as uh, the measure of importance of distribution for example when you have got good neighbors or not where the stock prices nearest stocks okay so each pixel of the picture when i talk on image data similarly each pixel of the picture is more related to its surrounding pixel so when i have an image as a data an individual pixel may not give me a relevant information whereby if i combine all together neighborhood pixels then it is going to give me some relevant information about this particular image so uh, that's how local correlation is very very important here to understand now one second so if i go now and i talk on more on lo local correlation for example if i take a two dimensional data and uh, in that suppose if i take a two dimensional image data so in this image data you have a you have a central pixel for an example and then what do you do you take uh, euclidean distance of formula k by root 2 okay so if this is your euclidean distance to define your locally correlated pixels then you would say that in this particular image uh, whichever pixel has got the distance from our current pixel less than this euclidean distance uh, then they are more important than the remaining one so suppose if there's a suppose a big image that i am drawing here and uh, suppose i am talking it with respect to uh, this particular pixel here then relevant to this particular pixel what all pixels have got less than k by root 2 value that is euclidean distance less than k by root 2 those pixels are taken into account for extracting the information out of it remaining pixels can be left discarded okay so this is how we extract the features out of a particular image based on the concept of local correlation now this is just a part of it that i am teaching there is more to it so first you understand what exactly is local correlation so the pixels in the grid shown below there are they are only important because i am talking with respect to this center pixel and relevant to that is uh, the pixels which are having less than the euclidean distance so beyond these pixels they are less important all of these so what exactly is this now when i calculate the local correlation wherein i am calculating what all pixels are falling into this boundary of k by root 2 for an example here this i call it as receptive field okay so this particular window is receptive field it is going to characterize what all important pixels are present inside that distribution so this hypothetical characteristic of distance based importance distribution is called as local correlation i hope you got it now what exactly is local correlation okay it's important for you to understand receptive field and local correlation here through local correlation you get to know the receptive field now coming into what exactly gave evolution to cnn we are going to see a little bit of technical stuff now so you understood what exactly is the local correlation now for an example if i talk now on technical terms so each output node is connected only to k by k input node agree now you have got a receptive field and you have k by k pixels in that so each output node is connected instead of the entire image to only the receptive field of k by k correct and say the number of output layer nodes are say absolute value of j okay so now the total number of parameters will be k by k by j agreed now comparing to the fully connected layer because the k is unusually usually very small for an example k is always kept small receptive field should be small it cannot be big because if you take big then it doesn't give you that much uh, uh, results or oh, you know you are you are actually wanting to have uh, uh, the nearest most important pixel so that's why we always try to keep k value small like 1 by 1 3 by 3 and 5 by 5 so general idea is k by k should be always less than the input uh, uh, nodes number of nodes okay so 
therefore it means that successfully you can reduce the amount of parameters that are calculated even though you are using a bigger image so that's how uh, important is local correlation and that's how important is your receptive period i hope you got it uh, because it is helping you to reduce the number of parameters now there's one more concept along with local correlation which you must understand is weight sharing if you understand these two then you will understand why cnn came into existence so the first one was local correlation i told you its importance the second concept is about weight sharing now although uh, through our receptive field we got uh, the number of parameters to be reduced to k by k by j right now the question is if you can reduce this amount of parameters further suppose what if i require only k by k para parameters to complete the calculation of one single current layer so can i do that the answer is yes now how do i do that through the idea of weight sharing so for each output node oj the same weight matrix we are going to use so then no matter how many output nodes you have you will always have the number of parameters as k by k so all of them are going to share their weights so with that suitably notably number of parameters will be reduced drastically so that's the idea and concept behind local correlation and uh, weight sharing which gave birth to convolutional neural network or cnn so by applying this idea of local correlation and weight sharing we were successful to be able to reduce the number of parameters from number of input nodes by number of output nodes to only the size of your receptive field which is important pixels by important pixels k by k so this kind of weighted local connection layer network is actually called as a convolutional neural network or cnn so cnn has been evolved from these two concepts one is local correlation and second is the ideology behind weight sharing so when you combine both of these you were able to reduce number of parameters and therein you can work with lot of image data so basically speaking convolutional neural network is actually used whenever you are working with whenever you have your input data as images then you will go for a cnn and uh, it was the beginning of our deep neural networks from invention of cnn itself now i guess i i have a little bit more to the introduction which i'll complete in the next particular topic so till this topic we are seen how cnn came into picture how it has evolved